Hi everyone, welcome to this quick start guide on how to use Zoom in a hybrid teaching environment. Every general purpose classroom has a projector screen with overhead speakers, a podium with a monitor and control panel, a mouse and a keyboard, a PC under the podium table, and an Epson combination document web camera with a built-in microphone. Keep in mind that the microphone is located at the top of the lens head on the Epson device. If you will be using Zoom to teach your class, you will be using this built-in microphone. We're going to review a quick way to get you started using the technology in a general purpose multimedia classroom. Press the PC button on the podium control panel. Pressing this button will link the PC display to the overhead projector. Note that pressing this button does not power on the PC itself. The PC should already be powered on. But if it's not, locate the PC power button on the PC under the podium table and turn it on. You may have to press some keys on the keyboard to wake up the PC monitor. Next, turn on the overhead projector by pressing the on button under the display heading on the control panel and ensure the volume knob is turned up. This knob controls the volume level of the room speakers. You'll notice the USB port on the right hand side of the control panel. If your lesson plans are stored on a USB key, you can plug it in here and access them from the PC. One more thing, make sure that the Epson document web camera is powered on before we get started. All right, so next I'm gonna log in to the classroom PC and I'm gonna use my LSU credentials. You may have to press a few keys on the keyboard or shake the mouse a little bit to wake up the PC monitor. And once that happens, I'm gonna log in and I will get to the home screen. Now, keep in mind that by this time, you should already have powered on the Epson document web camera. And I've already powered on the overhead projector. I've checked the volume knob on the control panel. And I've also plugged in the USB key into the USB port on the control panel. That USB contains my lesson plans for the day. Next, I'm going to click on File Explorer and then select the USB drive to access my lesson plans. For this demonstration, I'm going to select a PDF to show to my class. Now, of course, this could be a PowerPoint, Word document, or any file you are teaching from. I'm also going to maximize that document to make it easier for both on-site and remote students to see. I'm now going to open a web browser. In this case, I'm going to use Chrome. And I'm going to access Zoom by entering zoom.lsu.edu. Although there are a variety of ways to access Zoom, zoom.lsu.edu is just an easy way for me to remember the URL. On the right hand side of the Zoom login page, click Login. If this is your first time using Zoom on this PC for the week, you may have to re-enter your LSU credentials. Please make sure you enter your full LSU email address if prompted. Now you can see we are at my Zoom profile page. On the left hand side, you have several menu options available. Your profile may not contain all of the options that I have. That's okay. You will have access to what you need to conduct your class. I'm now going to select meetings from the Zoom menu. If you have scheduled your classes through Moodle, Moodle has a Zoom plugin that will automatically populate your classes into Zoom meetings. Note that the reverse is not true. You cannot populate your classes in Zoom and have them appear in Moodle. You can see that I have several meetings or classes already set up in my Zoom meeting profile. And for security purposes, I have covered my meeting IDs. Your meeting IDs will be displayed. Although you can also start your Zoom meetings directly from Moodle, I'm going to start my meeting from Zoom since this is a tutorial on Zoom. I'll do so by clicking the Start button. I'll get a prompt to open Zoom meetings and I will click Open Zoom meetings. You may get prompted to download the Zoom client. If so, please accept the download and notice at the bottom of the browser screen the option to install the download. This will take less than 10 seconds to install. 
You will next be prompted to join with computer audio and you want to click that option. At this point, you have started the Zoom meeting and you will notice the Zoom menu at the bottom of the Zoom window. If your students have used their LSU credentials to log in to Zoom or Moodle, they will automatically be joined to your meeting at this point. If a student does not use an LSU credential to connect, you as the host will be prompted to allow the participant into the meeting room. Please use caution when doing this as you can be subject to Zoom bombing. One thing you may want to do is mute all participants before you start your lecture. Do so by clicking on the participants icon and then click on mute all at the bottom of the dialog box that opens up. You'll need to confirm this action by clicking on yes. Don't worry, your students can unmute themselves to ask a question if needed. After I confirm that I want to mute all participants, I'm going to close the dialog box. So now we have started the Zoom meeting and the next thing I'm going to do is click on the record button on the Zoom menu. When I do so, I'm going to select record to the cloud. If you record to the computer, your lectures will not be available to your students. For the most part, always select record to the cloud. When I click record to the cloud, I should hear an audible message noting that the meeting is being recorded. The remote students will hear this message as well. Also notice in the top left-hand corner of the Zoom screen that there is a visual indicator that the meeting is being recorded. Now I'm ready to start sharing my screen with the on-site and remote students. Although there are two ways to do this, I'm going to click on the green button at the bottom of the Zoom screen labeled Share Screen. When I click on that button, a dialog screen opens up offering me the option to choose which document I want to share. Find your document and either double click it or click it once, then click the share button on the bottom right corner of the dialog screen. In this case, I double click the PDF file that I want to share. At this point, your on-site and remote students can see your shared screen. Notice that the Zoom menu now jumps to the top of the computer screen and hides when not in use. The button to stop sharing is in red at the top of your screen. The full Zoom menu is also available to you as before. For this particular demonstration, I do not have any participants in my meeting. If I did, I would see them on the right side of my computer screen. You would see a minimize button for the participant window, and you would want to minimize that window as it can be distracting to the students in the class as well as to yourself. You will have full control of your document just as you would without sharing. You can scroll through your PowerPoint file or whatever you're using and highlight text as needed. When you are finished with sharing the document, click on the Stop Share button at the top of the screen. Notice the Zoom menu now returns to the bottom of your screen. When you are finished with the class, click the End icon located on the bottom right hand side of the Zoom menu. You will be prompted to confirm you want to end the meeting for all. Close out your document, close out Zoom, and don't forget to log off the computer.